so this is where we left off in the previous video. We can actually move our player on the scene. And now it's time to make our player jump. So let's go back to the player movement script, open it up in the visual studio. And down here in the update method, um, let's, let's first make a float appear and public float let's call this one force or jump force and now let's go back to the update method and let's put a condition here to check if we have pressed the space button so input dot gate key down and key core dot space so now when we hit space button let's comment this out first and type in rb.addForce and it takes in a two, vector 2 here we want to add the force in the y axis of our player so let's type in transform.up and yeah not right and let's multiply this with the jump force now that's all we need to do here let's go back inside of unity and we need to set up the jump force first Let's scroll down to the player movement. Let's set this jump force to I think 100 or 50 maybe. Let's try it out. Okay, here our player does jump, but jump force is too small. So let's go. So let's go back and increase jump force to something around 200, and let's hit play again. Now, as you can see, our player can jump, but there is another problem here. We can continue jumping even in midair. So let's go back inside of the player movement script and here we will make a bool. And let's call it grounded. And let's set it equal to true by default. Now let's scroll down and we will use the unity default on collision enter 2D method. And here it takes in a parameter that will store the info about the collision. Let's call this call. Open up the curly brackets. And let's check if the collider that we hit has a tag of let's say ground. And if it does, we want to set the grounded equal to true. Meaning that we have hit the ground. Now let's go up here. We want to change the grounded to false when we press space. So grounded is equal to false. And here we will also check if the grounded is set to true in order for us to make the jump. So grounded is equal to true. And that's all we need to do here. So let's head back into Unity. Wait for it to load and let's hit play here. Okay, but there is another problem here. We haven't really tagged our ground as ground. Let's also rename this to ground. So let's go to tag and hit tag here. Hit this plus sign and let's name this to ground. Okay, now let's select our ground and let's assign this tag to our ground here. Okay, now if we go ahead and play, we can actually jump. And if we jump once, we cannot jump twice in the midair. So yeah, that's cool. Let's exit play mode and see what else do we need to do. So we are done setting up our player. Now it's time to add things to our environment to make it look better. So let's head back into Unity first. Let's select our player here and place it down on the ground so it doesn't fall every time we start the game. Save the scene now. Go to the sprites folder and drag and drop this square again to make platforms. Let's also rename this to platform. And let's change the position of our platform and also the size. To whatever size you want I'll keep this in thinner something like this we can then duplicate this 
and place it elsewhere. Here looks just fine. Let's now select both of our platforms and add box collider to deep them. And go to the tag here and assign the grid ground tag to our platforms so that player can jump from them too. Let's hit play now. And yeah, we also need to increase the jump force for our player. Let's go back, select the player. Let's bump this up to something like 500. It will be more than enough I think. So let's hit play again. And yeah, our player can now jump on these platforms. Cool. Oh, wait a second. We don't want him to rotate. So let's go back to player and scroll down to rigid body 2D in here. Click on constraints and just enable this freeze rotation here. Let's go and try this out now. Okay, so our player can no longer rotate but he does stick to the edges of the platforms and we don't want our player to do that. So yeah, let's go back and of the assets folder here, right click, create and let's find physics 2D material. Click on this and let's rename this to ground. And here we can set the friction of our material. I will set this to 0 because I don't want any friction. Let's select both the ground and the platforms and add this material to this material slot in the box collider 2D. Also we will create another one for our player. Let's just duplicate this by Ctrl D and rename this to player. Select the player and go to the box collider 2D and drag and drop this material then drag and drop this to the material slot. Make sure this friction and the bounciness is set to zero. Let's go ahead and hit play now. Now our player no longer sticks to these platforms no matter how hard we try. So yeah, I think that's pretty cool. So let's just close this. And let's see what else do we need to do here. Actually we're not done setting up our environment yet. So let's head back inside Unity, zoom out in the scene view. I'll just scale up our ground here a bit more. And I think here looks just fine. And I will just quickly make some more platforms here and place them around the scene. So yeah, our environment looks much more populated. So let's go to the hierarchy and create an empty game object here. Let's name this env short for environment. Also reset the transform here. And now select all of the platforms here and drag and drop them inside of our environment game object. So let's go ahead and hit play now. We can see the part of our platform outside the camera view but our camera does not follow us. So in the next episode we will make our camera follow script. And yeah that's it for this video. Thanks for watching guys. Until next time. See ya.